Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now to uh, take a first major conversation this morning, looking at the situation in the electricity sector in Nigeria. Now, there are indications that the nation's electricity supply crisis might worsen from today, Wednesday, as organized labor has directed workers in the power sector to down tools and commence an indefinite strike over pending labor issues with the transmission company of Nigeria. Now, under the aegis of the National Union of Electricity Employees, NUE, as a prelude to the strike, the aggrieved workers are scheduled to picket the Abuja National Headquarters of the Transmission Company of Nigeria. Indeed, that, that activity happened yesterday. Uh, in a circular by the General Secretary of uh, the Union, uh, Joe Ajero, uh, titled Call for Action, uh, sent to senior assistant general secretaries and zone organizing secretaries dated August 15, 2022. The union directed them to secure or ensure total compliance. Uh, this is a quite a, a dire situation and, um, of course, this adds to the ongoing crisis in the power sector of Nigeria. George Etomi is a lawyer and chairman of West Power and Gas Limited. He's a guest on this first uh, discussion on The Breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. Mr. Etomi, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. And how are you this morning? Very, very well. And I hope you are too. Um, what, what are the issues here as far as um, uh, this union is concerned with the transmission company of Nigeria? It's quite a dire situation. Do you think this is something uh, that should go ahead, such a, a strike, given the situation of power supply in the country as we speak? Some would say this is going to plunge Nigeria further into more darkness. Is this the way to go as far as the unions are concerned? I honestly pray that they don't go ahead with the threats to shut down the entire electricity supply to the nation. Because like you correctly said, um, it's going to put us in dire straits. In the last few weeks, we've been enjoying what you might call improved power supply. And this is going to be steady. And the worst thing that can happen to the electricity industry is for total shutdown. Because by the time you begin to reboot, uh, reboot and get power supply back is going to take you um, ages. So this is, we just really and honestly pray that you don't go through with the threat. Um, secondly, we understand that these are mainly labor um, related issues on three fronts. One regards the circular sent from the office of the head of service regarding what the term is stigmatization of uh, workers, uh, barring them from taking up employment in any uh, area in the power sector. Second is um, the issue to do with promotions um, within the TCN. And then the third one is what they call um, failure to honor obligations arising from the original privatization exercise by the market operator, the MO, as we call them. So as you can see, the three issues are labor-related issues to be dealt with by different um, agencies of either government or uh, its parastatals. But now we see all of them lumped together as a means of bringing about pressure on the part of government to do something about it. Uh, the truth also is that um, if you listen to labor, these issues are not new. They've been tabled. There have been several interventions, even by the legislature and different people. Agreements are reached, but they're never honored. And um, recently, I think the TCN wrote to them to say, oh, they've su suspended the vexed uh, promotion exercises. Um, and they're hoping also that um, they can be given two weeks to address the other issues. Labor's concern is you made the same promise in, in 2019, and three years after, you're still asking for two weeks, and um, go back, goes back and forth. But what this speaks to, in my mind, is the weakness in the structure we have in the entire electricity value chain. As you can tell, um, if there is a shutdown, it will affect both generation and distribution. 
Each of these have been privatized. And then the, the middleman, which is the TCN, is the one that's having these problems. So you can imagine the effect it will be on private sector operators that their facilities are being shut down on the instructions of a union that deals largely with some um, malfeasance from the part of government. It's such a weak link in the entire value chain. Um, I'm not going into the merits or the demerits of what they're saying, but I think we should understand that if this goes through, the ability of the discourse, for example, to meet with the market obligations will be severely impaired. Uh, same thing with the distribution and with the generating companies. Uh, we, we have written to the regulator uh, asking earnestly for their intervention uh, so that this does not go ahead. Because if we lose the momentum that we have now, uh, it will be a major setback. And, if, and um, without exaggeration, it's going to throw us um, at least six months back. We cut the, most of the gains we've made, which has been the steady improvement in our facilities, modernizing them, and um, generally applying the best practices to improve on the system will be great, greatly impaired. Uh, if you recall, uh, July 1st, the mid-term electricity market kicked off from the temporary electricity market. Uh, this is the partial activation of all the contracts in the sector, which means that if um, there is an intervening event like a strike, it, it could lead to uh, what you might call force majeure. Uh, if, however you look at it, it's not good. So we can only plead for the government to address the workers' issues uh, very quickly, but more importantly, plead with the um, electricity union not to go through with the, with the strike. Well, um, um, Judge Atomi, uh, let's also look at this in this sort of light. I think that you have also mentioned it, but uh, because a lot of persons will probably think that the workers are actually backing on strike because of, you know, the capacity or the, the condition in terms of um, executing or implementing. But that's not the case. The case here is with the welfare of the people and the implementation. It's almost the same thing with ASU. You get into an agreement, uh, you know, with government in 2009, and that has not been implemented or respected. And we're talking about that in 2000 or in 2022. The same thing. They are talking about, you know, welfare, some sort of agreement that was um, entered into in 2019 and when 2022. Why is this a pattern? Because it's a pattern. Why is this a pattern? An agreement being entered, you know, with one or two and it's not being respected because it's not that they are asking you know, that uh, the power condition be improved, but they're asking about, you know, their welfare and what has not been sorted out, what is due them that has not been paid. So what has this become, you know, a pattern? It has become, you know, a trend for us in Nigeria with agencies or with bodies that are saddled with responsibility of providing certain services. And then they fail at the end of the day, because on the other hand, uh, agreements have not been respected. I'm, I'm honestly not defending uh, the government in this regard. If you um, enter in, into an agreement, at least you can least to honor the agreement. So there's absolutely nothing I say uh, that should um, justify the government not honoring its agreement. The only concern that I have is that the method chosen, which is the threat uh, to shut down the entire electricity value chain, will do more tremendous harm to citizens uh, than labor itself may even have intended. Um, you can imagine if electricity is shut down now, from residents to um, offices, to, to factories, to whatever. I mean, it would be, they, 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 you cannot begin to calculate the monetary loss, not to talk about uh, going back to the generator days, inhaling fumes, um, the effect on the health and well-being. So yeah, you are you are right that government should not um, backtrack on its obligations or shirk its responsibility. But labor, labor too should be very considerate 
of the very Nigerian citizens who already sympathize with them. Because like you said, these are welfare issues and they should be dealt with. But don't punish um, the very citizens uh, from whom you are pleading for understanding. There must be other ways you can deal with it. I do not support entering into agreements and just walking away. All right. Uh, um, let's look at, at, at other issues regarding this. Um, I mean, this is this is clearly, um, uh, like you said, a labor issue. Nothing to do with uh, any of the uh, uh, the the main the the core, you know, activities of of the transmission company of Nigeria. Um, in in the midst of this, we have the 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 workers who were there in the days of PHCN. And now PHCN is the successor of NEPA. Um, so these are the people who we were being told um, that uh, the, the issues in the secular from the Office of Head of Service was on the stigma, stigmatization of the defunct PHCFs, PHCN staff, sorry, uh, payment of entitlement of ex-PHCN staff by the market operator. Um, so so we, we see that there is a sort of a connection still with the PHCN staff. Um, and the PAC and these. We look at the fact that they are saying that some of them who have um, NEPA training certificates have not been promoted. You know, some of the workers in the transmission company of Nigeria who have NEPA training certificates have not been promoted. Then also, the TCN had organized a, a promotion interview for some of the staff who are meant to go to another level and the, the unionists are not having it. They don't want the promotion interview because they're saying it goes against the laws. Um, so it seems, and it looks like there seems to be uh, an attempt to, to maybe, would you say, move forward with things. And, and, and this is what it seems Labour, the TCN is doing. I mean, is it wrong uh, to have a promotion interview? One may, may be able to read into what the TCN is trying to do with, um, with this promotion interview. So what, what do you say to this? You know, the TCN recently had its, its board appointed, and their mandate is to modernize the TCN. And by the way, you know, the TCN is composed of three major um, business units or component um, technical units. You have the, the ISP, uh, this is the Independent um, Systems um, um, Operator, the ISO, then you have the MO, the market operator, and then you have the transmission um, uh, company. That's the one that actually owns all the facilities that you they, they have, the transmission support company. Now, today, they're all housed under the TCN. But if we are going to go into um, um, a market-oriented electricity industry, uh, if you're going to attract invest investors to the sectors, you must get these component parts disaggregated and let them be run the way they are run internationally so that that way investors can come and see that there is transparency in the way these things are done. So this is the mandate of the board. And that's what the board um, uh, has set about doing. Uh, but as you can see, anytime you have anything like this, it's going to impact on workers uh, uh, who are there. They'll be just named for position for promotions. They want to be part of it for whatever reasons. Um, they do, uh, whoever is in charge doesn't want them to be part of it. It's going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be, it's going to bring about friction. This friction is not going to go away. <clears throat> it's not going to be addressed in one day. And uh, that's why I said I'm not going to go into the merits or the demerits. The fact is that there are welfare issues there are operational issues. If this whole talk was about how, what are we going to do to bring TCN up to modernity, bring it up to performance in a privatized environment, I can understand. Um, uh, but we're still dealing with um, issues to do with you. You promote you. You want to promote. You said some people cannot participate. Yeah, but, um, but, but, but you have been sorry to interject. Yeah, Barrister, sorry to interject. So, so what are you saying is that the, the new TCN uh, board uh, has a mandate to modernize uh, the the, uh, the the company the company and the transmission aspect of Nigeria's power sector. 
if, if this if this is what you're saying, it makes it clearer to us. Because I, I just want to go back to a few things that um, Joe Ajero, uh, General Secretary of NUE, said. He said that 67 managers going to senior manager are holders of NEPA training certificates. Now, these are K1 to K5, and where he, in his words, unjustifiably not invited for the 2021 promotion exercise. Um, and it means that these are people who probably have been there from NEPA days, holders of NEPA training certificates. I don't know how that sounds in your ear. 196 system operators going from senior managers to principal managers who pass the interview but are yet to be promoted out of the 262. Um, and they're now being invited for promotion interview. These are people who also... Uh, were from the defunct power holding company of Nigeria. Now, he also says that um, the TCN's implementation of a strange memo dated May 29, 2020, on the re engagement of severed defunct PHCN staff in public service after payment of severance packages. So, these are issues, and it seems like, like you're saying, it's a battle between mo modernizing the TCN and, and satisfying the desires of. Uh, a group of people who've been there from Nepal days. Now, I, I, I've interacted with officials of the um, part of the um, distribution uh, company uh, in an area I lived in, and some of them are relics of the Nepal days. Sorry to use that word. They're stuff of the of the Nepal days. We know them from Nepal days. So, is, is, isn't this going to drag Nigeria's electricity sector, Pascal, back? if we have people like this still involved and calling the shots? Well, you know, um, you're dealing with uh, human beings, you're dealing with welfare, you're dealing with the livelihoods, you're dealing with families, the support. So no matter how strong your desire is to modernize, even if you're going to discard them, it must be done in a manner. I don't even like to use the word discard. Um, because if they're coming from the old PHCN Nepal days, I'm sure they are slowly advancing towards retirement. So there's a way you can package them um, so they don't feel unappreciated or disgraced or shortchanged. Uh, that can be managed. It may not um, make your operations uh, change as rapidly as you would want to, but you're dealing with uh, the human element. And those of us who uh, took over the distribution companies, we're dealing with that problem. And we get complaints very often from consumers, uh, just, just what you were describing, about how these guys are not keeping step with what is going on. What we do, we keep having our workshops, our retraining, reorientation. And then as we do so, we're injecting um, new people, new blood, new methods, modern applications, um, and stuff. It happened with the banking sector. Uh, it happened with uh, telecommunications. You can't totally and entirely run away. We are dealing with human issues. Uh, but you must strike that balance between the desire uh, to accommodate people who are a drag in the system, and then also meeting with your targets. Electricity distribution companies have monthly targets they must meet. And if you don't meet it, uh, you have a deduction from your, from your earnings, and that is a real deal. So if I have that kind of a pressure, then please let me be free to employ people and apply the tools that will enable me meet that market. Uh, labor union is there to protect its workers. And don't forget when you say labor, labor, it's the same workers, it's the same people who answer you, yes, sign in the morning, are the ones who lock you out, once they a strike is called out. So uh, what we do is mainly let them just know what we, that striking should always be, it should be absolutely, absolutely last resort, especially with a critical industry like electricity. If this we're going to end with the issues being addressed, I can understand, but how are the millions of Nigerians who would lose revenue who would lose uh, health, who would lose, how are they going to recover? They are Nigerians too, wholly entitled to, to electricity, which they pay for. So we too also appeal to them. Yes, whilst you are pursuing your legitimate demands, you must look this thing from a more holistic point of view and strike a balance between your desire to see justice done to your workers and your overarching 
obligation to ensure that Nigerians, uh, their well-being is also protected. All right, but let's also look at uh, the fact that, you know, there are reports by the T. CN, uh, you know, the power generation had dropped uh, by 6.4%. You know, we're looking at 3,675 megawatts. What difference does it make that uh, the workers are going on strike? I mean, this is not to sound um, insensitive to the Arkansas, but, you know, it's one and the same thing. We have always been in darkness uh, because you can't give what you no, don't have. No, so no, what, no, what difference no, 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 is this? I don't agree with that kind of uh, thinking. You, we, we cannot say because power generation has dropped, it makes no business shut down the system. Um, that should not be the thought process whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's a continuous and sustained effort to improve the electricity value chain. And the modest gains we make should not be sacrificed on the altar of a strike. And it makes absolutely no difference. There are so many other reasons why uh, power generation can drop. It could be to, due to lack of gas, it could be to technical issues. But to labor to be the reason or the deliberate shutdown is a totally different kettle of fish. And I don't support that. All right, thank you very much, uh, George Tommy, uh, lawyer and chairman, West Power and Gas Limited. I'm sure on another day we'll have you over to talk about the uh, distribution side of uh, the power sector. A lot going on there. But we're very grateful for your time and your expert insight into the issues in the industry this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right, time to move on. When we return, we talk some more. We have uh, more discussions ahead, of course. Mercy. Um, students with entrepreneurial skills will grow the economy. Um, <laughs> Not grow the economy. We'll, we'll grow we'll, the economy. Exactly. That's what I say to them. So, Messi will tell us some more about that when we come back from the break and we'll have some, of this, some analysis regarding this. Please stay with us.